The previous two seasons, you didn't top 300 yards, and then you came out with 1,368 yards, nine TDs, with Doug Flutie at the helm, and you guys go to the playoffs. What led to this breakout season, and was there something that clicked for you this year? What do you think the big difference was? I think the biggest difference was uh, I refocused, and I wanted to, to help the team win. And the biggest thing, I spent a lot of time in the offseason with Flutie. So he knew my movements. I knew how he threw the football. And I think he spoke up for me and said, hey, I think this guy has something special. And they gave me the opportunity to start, and the rest is history. I think I'm more proud of being one of the few guys in this league that has caught almost 70 passes and averaged 20 yards a catch. That's very yeah. difficult to do. And I'm here in Charlotte, and Randy Moss is here. He, he still can't believe he's at 20 yards in a season. That's so difficult to do. We are reliving the greatest moments in Bill's history through the eyes of the legends who created them. This is Bill's Legends Breakdown, powered by Microsoft Teams. I'm Steve Tasker, and I'm pleased to be joined by Eric Moulds. Eric, it's good to see you. Coming into the 2020 season, you held the franchise record for most receptions and receiving yards in a season. This is a franchise that has some Hall of Fame wide receivers, and one of which you played with, Andre Reid. What do those records mean to you? Oh, they mean a lot, but at the same time, you know, I had an opportunity to break one of those records with Andre opposite of me. So it meant a lot in that particular time because he was happy for me. But as you know, Steve, records are, are made to be broken. It's taken a little while, but I expected some guys like T.O., Stevie Johnson, and those guys, Lee Evans, to break their records. But I'm happy that, you know, Stephon uh, Diggs is doing well, and he, that's good for the Buffalo Bills and uh, the fan base. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Andre was on the team with you when you had your breakout season in 98. I want to go back to that season and take a look at some of these unbelievable plays you made. Well, let's start with, with the Carolina game that year. It's your third straight win, the Flutie at the quarterback position and your first 100-yard performance of that season. And on the opening drive of the game, you had a juggling catch for a 20-yard touchdown, and then you backed it up with an 82-yarder in the second quarter. Take me through these two plays. Well, this was the play that we wanted to, uh, we knew the Carolina played a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, and so they put me in a slot, and it was supposed to be a seam throw, and I think Flutie was gonna back shoulder the throw and kind of left it a little bit short, but at the same time, the defensive back uh, got his hand in there and tipped it, and I just stayed focused on the football when he tipped it, and I followed it with my eyes, and eventually uh, I made the catch. Yeah, and you came back and you backed that play up with this monster of a catch. Yeah, this was a play that we wanted to run. We knew that uh, that corner at the particular time had a, a cast on his arm, as you can see right there. But we wanted to run a corner rod on him and, 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 and test that arm and see if he could cover the whole way. And, and we knew they were going to play man-to-man. -man and and, and Flutie said, hey, if they play any kind of man against you, it's going up. And that's what happened. Yeah, so we, you have those two plays to get the season off to a nice start. Then let's fast forward to week 13. And you guys lose to New England on an untimed down after a pass interference call. It was a tough loss, but you had one of the best catches of any Bill has ever made. You make this ridiculous one-handed grab in between double coverage. One guy draped all over you, and then 84 yards to the house. How do you remember this? Yeah, I remember Ty Law trying to undercut the, uh, the skinny post and the safety was to that side. So I didn't really expect Doug to throw the ball. You know, his read was if the safety is to my side and he double, he goes to the back side. But uh, I think Doug was in the rhythm at that particular point. And he said, hey, if I see any kind of man coverage and I feel like uh, the old cliche that they teach quarterbacks, throw your receiver open, and that's what he did. He threw me open and I just concentrated on the football. I thought it was gonna get killed, uh, but I, I concentrated on the football and just made the play. Following week, you had another monster game against Cincinnati. You set your regular season high with 196 yards, added a couple more touchdowns, and one of those touchdowns was a perfect display of why you were so dangerous after the catch. You broke three tackles, outran the Bengals' entire secondary for a 70-yard touchdown. What do you remember about this one? I remember that they blitzed, and I, you know, I had a hot adjustment, and, and Flutie saw it, and I saw it. So it was supposed to be a deep route, but when they blitz like that, we run the slant pattern, and you know, I just, I just got my momentum going, and the guys uh, made a couple of guys missed, and you know, I thought I was going to get tackled because I had two guys closing in, as you can see, and then I just put my shoulder into one of them and, and knocked the other guy, and you see Thurman come in and make a great block and spring me. And then Kevin Williams comes in and, and, and cleans up. And it was just really a foot race with the, with the corner back then. Yeah, and one of the great, you know, mysteries of football is that that was the year you played the only playoff game of your career. And you absolutely balled out. You set an NFL record that still stands today, 240 receiving yards. What was your mindset going into that game, and how do you remember it? Well, I remember the week coming into the game, it was a lot of back and forth with the Miami Dolphins, with Flutie and, and their corners. And he made a statement that said, you know, if I see Moles one-on-one, it's going up. 
And they came back and a couple of their corners said, you know, I want to flush those fluted flakes down his throat. So they kind of got me ticked off a little bit. And me and Fluted sat at our lockers and talk. And I told him, I said, you, if you throw it up, I'm gonna make a play. And it was just one of those situations where he's just said, you know what, I'm coming to you no matter if it's two people, three people on you. So you can see on the film a couple of times, I had four people guarding me and Fluted still threw it in there. Deep and it is caught inside the five yard line and for the touchdown, Eric Moles. Take me through some of these catches you made in this game. I mean, we saw this one where you dragged the guy into the end zone on a, on a nice little over the shoulder. What are some of the other catches you remember? I remember the catch over the middle. I knew they were going to play man-to-man -man when I was in the slot, and so they had no choice but to do that from our scheme. And I knew if they, I got any man-to-man -man that it was coming to me, so I just had to beat my corner, and, and I trusted uh, the position where Fluter was going to throw the football. This play was kind of a tag play. He would tap his wrist a couple of times and say, hey, I want you to run the go route, because we would have set routes on, and then if Flutie saw man-to-man -man coverage, he could change the play at the line of scrimmage, and that's what he did a lot of. This 240-yard playoff game, did this change your career at all? It did. It, it brought a lot more attention to me. I think that uh, people started to realize that, hey, I was a receiver that you really had to focus on, that you, you couldn't play this guy man-to-man -man coverage a lot. I mean, because you got to realize at that particular time, the Miami Dolphins, uh, and they had the number one defense in the league at that particular time. And they had four guys in their secondary going to the Pro Bowl. So, and Zach Thomas and Hall of Famer Jason Taylor. So they had a lot of guys that were excellent football players. So to go in a place like that against the number one defense in the league at that particular time and, and you break the NFL record for most yards, that was a career changing play for me. Yeah, but let's look ahead in your career. 2002, you came became the first Buffalo Bill to have 100 catches. It was the first season where you were catching balls from Drew Bledsoe, the jersey behind you. How much hype was there around your coming into the Jet game in week one? How did that change your approach? It, it, it didn't really change my approach. I knew I had uh, Drew coming in. I knew that he, was, he can wing the football. I just wanted to go out and relax and play. You know, as a receiver, you want to be in your spot that you're supposed to be in and make the, the throws easier for the quarterback. I, I tried to didn't come in and put any pressure on myself. I just wanted to play and uh, help the team win. And we just kept focused and just kept our rhythm going. So in week 13, you and Peerless Price, Travis Henry, you all, you all go over 1,000 yards. You guys win the game 38-21. You go to 6-6. Six and six. You had a 57-yard touchdown. You finished with 130 yards. Do you remember that game? and sharing that milestone with your teammates of all three of you guys going over a thousand. Yeah, yeah, that was a plus, man, because we all used to sit in, in the meeting rooms and say, what if all three of us go over a thousand yards this year? We, our goal was to just win football games, but you set goals, individual goals and team goals. And, and you know, myself, Travis and, and Peerless, we wanted to go out and, and make a statement. You know, rare, rarely, I think the Bills have done it a couple of times. A couple of other groups of guys have done it. Went over a thousand yards, Thurman and Andre and those guys. But myself, Peerless, and Travis Henry. You know, people don't realize Travis had almost 1,500 yards rushing that year. Right. And I had close to, I had 1,300 and something yards. And Peerless, I had almost 1,300 yards receiving that year. And with 94 catches. So that was one of the better offenses that I've been around. Yeah. Looking back on all the success you had here in Buffalo, you're always going to be connected to this team. What would you like your legacy to be when fans think back about, you know, the time you spent here in Buffalo? What would you like them to think about? Just how hard I played. You know, I, I think I wasn't put in the situation where I just had one quarterback and I had, you know, I, I had to deal with 10 different quarterbacks. But it was one of those things that, hey, no matter who was in there, they saw me play hard. And, and I think the fans respected what I did. And, you know, I, I, you know, I played physical as far as blocking and catching the football and making plays. And, you know, you know, Steve, anytime you have fans sitting in that jersey and a lot of them have your jersey on, they have a lot of respect for you. And I think the uh, the, the majority of the Bills, uh, Mafia and the, and the community respected the way I play. And, and that's why I get a lot of love to this day. Eric, you were an absolute beast when you played. I don't ever think you got the recognition you deserved. I genuinely yeah. believe if the teams you were on would have had more success, you would have wound up in the Hall of Fame. You are definitely one of the greatest Bills receivers it. of all time and a true Bills legend. I want to say I appreciate you and I thank you for doing this and spending some time with us. I appreciate it, Steve. Anytime for you, man.